And we are live. Welcome back, guys, to another Getting Salty Experience podcast. Happy holidays to everybody. We've been off for a while, but we're back with a couple of new hard charges. Hard charges. Hard charges. This podcast is brought to you by Getting Salty Apparel. Check, check, little plug there. And also what I need you guys to do is to reach on over and hit the little red button on subscribe and subscribe to our channel. So we got my boy, Louis Refrano again. Oh, no, he's hitting. <laughs> Louis Refrano. We got Vincent Pickford, Lieutenant Squad Company 288. Where else are you from, bro? Uh, started out in seven truck and uh, made the move to squad 270. 270. That's the other squad in Brooklyn. Brooklyn? That's oh, the yeah. other squad. Oh, it, oh, it, oh, I'm sorry. It was, it was in Queens. The other squad in Queens. That's right. Never That's heard it. it. Never heard of them. Yeah. And I think promoted in Staten Island. Uh, squad 288. And that was, was it. To us. And we also have Tough Tony Tedeschi, Triple T. Tony, throw out your resume there, bro. Give it to him. Give the whackers. What's something. up, brother Double K? My brother Louie and my man Vincent. Um, I started in 237 Engine in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Oh, scary. Scary Brooklyn. You know, scary Brooklyn. Then, uh, like Vincent, I was fortunate enough to go over to Squad 270 as a young snot nose fireman. That was in Staten Island. And I got lucky yeah. enough, went over to Rescue One in Manhattan. Oh, Rescue? Pete? The big see? rescue. Hold on a minute. Uh, so <laughs> rescue. <laughs> hey, rescue. Oh, oh, all right. You didn't tell the people the code word today, Producer Pete. Sorry, technical difficulties. <laughs> the code word is rescue. rescue. Uh-oh. <laughs> so you went over to Rescue Company. What? One. Number one. A, a big city rescue. Big the city big rescue. city rescue in Manhattan. And then um, shortly there, I spent a couple of years there. And uh, I went over to get your glasses ready. Rescue two. Oh, rescue <laughs> two. <laughs> Woo. All right. I was there for it's about a half to to order. Order. Had you? Uh, yeah, he was going. He was going to miracle order. You never made it to three, then you stopped at two. No, no, I stopped at two. I had about a half a cup of coffee there. Oh, he beat me to it. He circumvented then, uh, yeah, the ball so breaking. <laughs> and then uh, I got promoted and uh, went out to the big world as a lieutenant. I landed at the Squadron Two Eighty Eight as a oh. lieutenant. Some of the best years of my life on the job. Then uh, after that, when I got promoted to captain, I went back to uh, mine and Vinny's alma mater of Squadron 270, and that's where I finished up my career. And you also did some FEMA work, right? Weren't you in charge of the FEMA team? Uh, I was on New York Task Force 1 uh, as a rescue manager. And Whoa, me and my rescue brother manager? <laughs> Okay. And then uh, okay. me and uh, brother Lewis there uh, had a big part in uh, creating um, like an urban search and rescue. Oh, <laughs> oh this is <laughs> What are you uh, what are you drinking there by the way? Uh, a little red wine, a little red wine from uh, Napa Valley, California. Oh, very nice. What's the name of it? It's actually uh, a Tedeschi winery out in Napa <laughs> Valley, California. Really? Yeah, wow. Of course it is. There you go. How nice. you doing? So, nice. you drink the wine and your uh, your wife drinks the man stuff. Is that what happens? Yeah, you know. That's what happens. You get soft in retirement. So uh, just kind of... I think he's got a manly glass there. All right, yeah. so you retire look, out of a captain like out of... a gobule, of... man. Huh? Not a little sifter. Oh, he's got a little sifter? So you started out... You finished up in squad 270 as the captain. Started out in Brooklyn. Went to the R's. Like that? I like it. One, One and two. Better. Right? Tell us a little about uh, your time in two, Tony. Um, like I said, I spent about a, about a cup of coffee in Rescue 2, but, uh, Rescue 2 is Rescue 2. Let me tell you, um, you know, when they say, uh, those guys go to the most fire duty, it just is what it is. They do. They go to a lot of fires. 
Uh, emergency work, not so much. Uh, every once in a while. But uh, when it comes to fire duty, you can have some real good night tours. Probably one of my most memorable night tours. And one of my favorite stories to tell, if you guys you guys uh, all know Danny Murphy, right? Lieutenant Murphy? Yep. So uh, one night, a typical or a, what you would say a quintessential rescue two night. We're getting, uh, we're getting our, uh, you know, our balls kicked in pretty good. We had two all hands. We went down to Southern Brooklyn. Good second alarm. Vincent will remember the guy I'm working with, Vinny Tavella. Vin, you remember Vinny Tavella? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, one of the best ball breakers on the job. To the floor above, we go, uh, we get beat up pretty good at the second alarm down on like in the southern portion of Brooklyn, down on Ocean Parkway. And another job comes in back up in Bushwick. So we're like, okay. So we get on on the rig. We're pretty beat up. We say, okay, oh, just got like a 10 minute ride. We'll just, we'll just rest on the way up there. So we get up there, vacant building, going pretty good. Still haven't found the fire. Mind you, we just drove like 15 minutes. We haven't found the fire. Me and Vinny are assigned to the floor above. We go to go up the interior stairs. No good. Jam packed like a railroad train on the, the interior stairs. We bounce back out front. We go up the portable ladder, jump into the portable ladder. One of the truck companies had take out the had taken out one of the HUD windows. And uh, he goes, I'll go to the left. I said, I'll go to the right. And uh, we didn't really even have our face pieces on. It wasn't too bad. So we start crawling. Things start getting a little bit worse. Pop the face pieces on. As I'm crawling down the hallway, I could see the fire in the rear. We're going to make the call on the radio that we need a line up there. We said, ah, let's wait till we get to the rear department. Well, the truck's taking the windows in the front. And all of a sudden, like the Boom. tail of a dragon, we just see the fire come whipping up. Now, mind you, it's a cold, winter's nasty-ass night. I turn to the left. I tell Vinny, he's on the other side of the room, we better get back to the window. So we start scrambling back to the window. By that time, boom, it's down to the floor, lights out. I get back to the window. I go get to, you know, kind of get, get back out on the ladder, and the fire's blowing over my head. So I said, okay, I'm going to do one of those fancy head-first bailout maneuvers. I go to do it, and as I jump myself up onto the windowsill, the ladder falls. Out in the street is the battalion chief looking up, and he's got his eyes like, ah! Like this. I'm like, put the fucking ladder back up. So we put the ladder back up. Out the window I come. I spin around. Just before I went out the window, boom. Minnie hits me in the legs. He comes up. By the time he's jumping out the window, Fire. The fire's blown through his arms. He comes out the window, twists around on the, the ladder, comes down. And what do we do? We run right back right in back the building. In, right? of course. I thought the ladder so, fell over the little ladder you had to get up to the <laughs> windowsill. That didn't fall over? <laughs> well, he had to boost me up, you know. You know oh, he boosted nice you up on the window? <laughs> <laughs> I had to step on me. Guy, guy. So <laughs> <laughs> but look at who we're talking. So, Five to six right yeah, here, bro. Yeah, yeah. Big, big guy <laughs> so... <laughs> So Vinny so boots me up. I'm, out as I'm coming it. out the window, and Vinny's coming out the window, Jimmy <laughs> Keezer, who's oh, now the captain of squad one, he's going up the aerial ladder. So he sees the whole thing, like, you know, from a bird's eye view. Of course, he's laughing, getting a good chuckle out of the whole thing. And uh, so at the end of the fire, the chief goes up to Danny Murphy, and he goes, hey, how, how's your two guys? And he goes, uh, what do you mean, how's my two guys? He goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, two guys, they jumped out the window like they were on fire. So he's like, uh, all right, give me a minute, Chief. So he calls us on the radio, says, come on over here. Half of Vinny's mustache is burnt <laughs> off, burnt, you know. And he goes, that what were good. you two retards doing? We were like, well, you know, hello, we're making a move to the floor above, beep, blah, blah. And he's like, it was a vacant building, you idiots. They didn't have water on the fire. We were like, ah, you know, we're trying to be aggressive, get to the second floor. He's like, yeah, Lou, you should have saw it. Those two idiots came flying out the windows like flaming squirrels. So that was my name on, on Bergen Street, one of the flaming squirrels. Flaming, oh, flaming squirrels? Squirrel. Oh, nice. You didn't say, oh, that's what we do in Rescue 2. We... <laughs> oh, I said it. Oh. <laughs> Look at Pete. He's getting quick now. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden now he remembers where the thing was. <laughs> that's how we do it, not too. 
Ah, tried to say that, and, and, and that, that's what Vinny tried to say to Murphy, and Murphy kind of smacked us down. So really? he was big. He won. All right, so I had the pleasure of, of chauffeuring both this guy, Tony, and this guy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. As a, oh, and this guy. <laughs> all three of them I drove. We probably all got the same lame Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> right? You ever call you Batman and Robin? Though? I never <laughs> called him Batman and Robin. <laughs> we probably all got the same call me Tonto and uh, Kim Wasabi. You were, yeah. And I had to be Robin. He had to be Robin. Why did he have Pete, producer Pete? If I'm driving and he's sitting next to me, Who's Batman? <laughs> Batman drives the Batmobile. Robin does not drive the Batmobile. <laughs> Batman drives the Batmobile, right? Okay. So hence Robin. Put your, uh, your green tights on and shut up. <laughs> so anyway, I bought these two right here. I have two very similar story, almost the same but different. So let's, needless to say, uh, both of them had a bit of a temper. Can we say a temper? Oh, like me. Uh, one of them coming to us. Temper. I don't know what was coming to us. So the first guy, Tony Tadeshi, if we didn't get assigned on a box that we were supposed to be on, if a job came in, he would call a dispatcher and say, dispatcher, put us on that box. Our box. And they would say, negative 288, we're in service. Tony proceeded to take the handset of the phone and smash it on the windshield of the rig multiple times. So Finn Pickford had one up it. So we're on the Grand Central Parkway, and we box comes in that's supposed to be ours. And he says, Queens put us on the box. Negative 288, remain in service. So Vin takes his foot, boot, puts it on the dashboard, yanks the radio out, and throws it on the Grand Central Parkway. <laughs> All I said to was one thing. I'm not sure, but I think we might need that sometime tonight. <laughs> well, what do you got? <laughs> Allegedly. 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 Didn't really happen. <laughs> How do you explain that one to the radio mechanics? The, yeah, uh, what happened to the, the cord got caught in the door. Right. And a passing car must have gone. Oh, and yanked the radio out from it. the dashboard and wound up on the Grand Central Parkway. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Oh, I yep. Yeah, I have to say, Vin, when they told me you did that, like I thought, okay, I broke the microphone handle. I lost my – they said, no, nope, pick it through the radio right out the window. Said, right out the window. Nice. Legendary. You, know, you know what the best we was? We didn't need it anyway. In, in the squad office above his lockup, they had a little piece of the phone, right? They, I guess yeah. they had the, like the uh, the handset or something. It was all that was left. It was mm. all that was left. <laughs> you remember the first tour I drove you, bro? Uh, yes, I do. You remember what you got a face full? I, just, I, I can't believe you actually invited me here to do a, a video related thing <laughs> because since that day I've had a face for radio only. <laughs> Very first tour, Tony. I'm driving him. We get a run. Squad 18 must be out. We get a run to Manhattan. I'm going flying, getting ready to go through the tunnel. And I fucking cream the rig on the side of the toll booth and the fucking, <laughs> and the side view mirror glass flies in Vinny's face. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. I, like, I guess it's how they do it. I don't know. It was like I was shaving. And I had about 50 nicks on my face, and, and there's this, these little trails of blood coming out of all these different holes. Um, I reported into the chief like that, I believe, and uh, he kind of looked at me like, uh, you want to take a little time? I'm good, that, chief. That story reminds I was. We were coming back. It was on Garrow. It was in, uh, was in the front seat. We were coming to the trade center, and I was driving, and it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, you know, we were all tired from being down there doing what we were doing. So but I'm flying in the tunnel. And you know how the tunnel is. It's just it's just barely enough room on both sides. Yep. And you're going about and you're 50, doing 50 miles tunnel. an hour. And I could see the the tiles on the left side just going, you know. And Aguero says to me, he's like, there's a truck. I could see a truck in the right lane towing another truck, a big tow truck towing like a box truck. And I'm getting up close to it, and I'm flying. And he's like, you don't got it. He's like, heads up, you don't got it. I'm like, no, no, I got it. He's like, no, heads up, you don't got it. I'm like, Lou, I got it. He's like, you don't got it. Meanwhile, I just, I never let off the gas. And now I pass the box truck, which is like, you know, off the back of the pickup truck, off the back of the tow truck. And I'm like, ah, I got it. All of a sudden, I see what he's talking about. The truck, the tow truck has a mirror. 
that's sticking out like nice. this far, <laughs> it hits the center of the windshield <laughs> and shatters you don't have it. the windshield. It shatters the windshield. I mean, every, it sounded like, uh, you know, a building explosion. I'm like, he looks over at me. He's like, are you kidding me? I told you didn't have it. You know? yeah. Next thing I know, we pull over. Yeah, you get it. You get it. You get it. I mean, I told his wife, his kids, that story. We're just... Uh, he still God rest his soul. Oh my God, he just he couldn't believe. And then he made he made the truck driver follow us back to the firehouse. He made me change his mirror. Nice. All that was broke. You know, I had about twenty mirrors in the basement. So I got one, one of my favorite uh, no. one of my favorite driving stories. It's a quick one. Tony knows uh, a little bit about this because Tony bought Mark Giannini over the two seventy. So I had worked with Mark for a short time before I got promoted, and then I'm fortunate enough to uh, work the tour back in two seventy as a lieutenant. And Mark is driving me. So we're going down a pretty narrow street, and he's just on the gas. We're going. And uh, and I don't think he's got it, but I don't say anything. And all of a sudden, I start, I'm like, mirror, 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 mirror. And Mark looks over me because, why do you keep saying that? I'm like, because you keep hitting him. <laughs> and he got the point after a while. Let's move a little bit over <laughs> Just a couple I have ago. one Midtown Tunnel story with uh, Matt Corliss. Remember Matty mm -hmm. Corliss, Poppy Corliss? We're taking the second piece. Our second, we, The squad has two pieces, the rig and a second piece. I'm, a, I'm in the left lane. He's in the right lane. He's driving he's the second to be piece. Following you, right? yeah, he's, in the, he's in the right lane. He's the second piece. I'm in the first. I'm in the rig. Flying down there. He, he radios me. He goes, Coops, there's a guy right up your ass. I go, all right, 10-4, thanks. He goes, hold on a minute. He takes the second piece and he starts ramming the little things that stick yeah, up yeah, yeah. and they're flying on the windshield <laughs> of the guy behind him. <laughs> he goes, hold on. <laughs> uh, good thing we're all retired. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is all allegedly. So I'm going to let Tony tell the story, the most famous story of him and I. He knows which one I'm talking about. The fire on, off of Grand Avenue. What was it, Tony? What street? Oh, I, it was a number street. I don't remember. Yeah, was third it? place. Come on, dude. You see, no one knows where it is. <laughs> you, know where it. you can find it now. <laughs> yeah. How convenient. This is one of Tony's. Well, here it is. Like, yeah, man, yeah. Actually, there's a couple of good parts to this story, but the best part is, is me and him going. So he's driving. The box comes in. Uh, it was either late at night or early in the morning. Oh, right? I don't remember. Six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. All right. So like six o'clock in the morning, we're going. The, the ticket has the, the cross streets. Well, the cross streets on the ticket are wrong. So he's all like, you know, trying to, you know, clear his head. He, he, he we're flying up uh, Grand Avenue. Was Grand Avenue or 69th Street? Grand Avenue, baby. Grand Avenue. And we're going, we're going. And now through the schoolyard, I can see the, the building. And the reason I knew it was the building was there was fire blowing out of the back of it. So <laughs> as I'm looking at the building, I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait to give the 1075. You know, I'm going to be all cool. And all of a sudden, I start feeling the rig turn to the left. <laughs> the opposite side of where that building is. I go, Kev, where are you going? I'm going to the address. I go, yeah, well, that's not where we're going. He goes, well, what do you mean? I go, we're going to... He goes, we're going to the fire. I go, no, we're going to that building. <laughs> that one's on that fire. I want to go to that, that fire. <laughs> then he goes, and I go, listen, if you don't fucking get us, because now we turn, and then we have to turn again. And I go, if you don't get us in there, I'm fucking killing you. You understand that, right? I'm going to kill you. He goes, don't worry. No one knows where it is. And really, no one did. It was a funky block, funky place to get. And we finally get there. Of course, good job, 1075. And uh, and uh, Mesma was working, right, because he had the backup. And we had some new kid from 24 Truck that uh, the captain had told us, oh, he's the best guy. In the yeah, fire. Greg, uh, I forget his name. Yeah, I don't want to mention his name, even if I remember the name. He's <laughs> the best guy in the fire. Good idea. I would have said so, allegedly. Uh, allegedly. 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 That was yeah, allegedly. So... You know, now he's got the nozzle. We'd give the, you know, we would give the new guy the nozzle for like the first 60 days, you know, and uh, he had the can. So now we stretch the line, fire in the second floor. It's a real cut and dry job. This is going to be good, you know. So open up the door. Mesmer's the backup. And, you know, 
Mesma's Mesma, Jimmy Mesma. And, uh, but he was good. He was steady. We start moving in. The kid's like, it's hot. It's hot. I, can't go. I go, yeah, it's hot. The fucking building's on fire, guy. Keep moving. Keep moving. You're not melting. And we put the fire out. Everything worked out well. And guess what? We got in first day. We did. Good job, Kev. I, you know why? Because I made that bat turn right on Grand Avenue and cut 287 off, bro. I was swinging that like I was driving that like I stole it. Yeah, man. When I when I felt the inertia of the rig going the wrong I way, swear I, guys, I, I want to go to that fire. Isn't I'll that, fucking <laughs> cool blitz. You don't get me in first two. Isn't that? It's just a. And, and he's arguing me, but the address is this way. It's no, this I way. didn't say that. I, I was following him with smoke, and when Grand Avenue made a turn, I didn't look. It wasn't no longer on my left side. It was on my right side. <laughs> We had we had a job at Quickie, rest his soul. He was he was driving. I think Matt Neary had the nozzle. Matt always talks about this job, and it was right right by O'Neill's. And uh, O'Neill first do fire. We could see this as soon as the the doors went up. We could see the smoke, you know, looking that way. So we turn out. We're heading up, and the back of the building you could see it down one of the side streets, but it was a one way, so you had to go all the way around. So I could see the fire out the windows as we went past it and now the next block we had to make a right and i'm like i I look over to matt and i'm like matt we got a good job and he was like so it was going to be his first nozzle job and quickie i guess he got mixed up and he made he made a left turn right in front of o'neill's and of course we were like oh yeah he's going down the block fast we start screaming it's on the other side so he starts backing up we jump off and i see 292 come flying past us and turn into the block. And I hear on the radio, 292 in Queens, 1075. And it was just like. See, like, so what did, What was the difference there, bro? Yeah. I got you in first. It's just, I, no no but, threat of life uh, being altered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's like you wait for that the whole time and then to, to lose it in a split so second. I got a little uh, tip, Tony, uh, uh, a little story one time where uh, you and Pickford almost went to blows in the supermarket. You know anything about that? Or was maybe maybe Vinny was allegedly the allegedly maybe uh, Vinny- allegedly. I'll let Vinny tell the story. All right, <laughs> I I don't remember too much of it. I'm, I'm uh oh, I'm, what? I'm, I'm glad uh, it didn't happen. I think like any time uh, uh, brothers, especially I think we were pretty new at the time, right, Tony? Do you remember it? Yeah, yeah, we were very new, young guys, high strung. Do you have anything to do with for being a wise ass? It might have. What was that? <laughs> have anything Pickford do to Pickford being a wise ass? Um, I could say that that was probably part of it, and uh, I would have to take some responsibility because, uh, <laughs> you know, once again, uh, you know, even though some people say I have a temper and I find that hard to believe, but you know, um, I think it was um, it was very heated, very quick, and luckily nothing uh, actually. You guys changed. weren't rolling around the meat case or anything? No, no, no. You shouldn't be here. You we came close. <laughs> In situations like that, when two like young snot noses like us, and he was a little bit, he had a little bit, he had more time than I did when I first got there. But, but uh, Tommy Richardson, who's now the chief of operations, was was the chief uh, was the captain of the company, and he had brought in some really solid senior guys. And one of them, God rest his soul, Tommy Bone, and the other Ray Sealy. When uh, you know we kind of started to go astray or get out of hand uh the two big dogs kind of laid down the law and uh they calmed things down so we knew that even if we did roll around in the you know the produce aisle there'd be hell to pay when we got back to the firehouse yeah right right mm. what was painted on the door tone the two seven what was it? swing town swing town right 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 we had swing a town was the basement <laughs> because uh, that was from eric daly because uh um, that all came out of, you know, a couple of the arguments. Yep. You couldn't handle it on the first Uh-oh. floor. There's always something Are you still there. Yeah. Um, a couple of the arguments that popped up and Eric Daly, another guy, God rest his soul, painted two fists. Oh, I Uh-oh. love that picture. You there? Yeah. yeah. With an arrow pointing down. Still there? The- yeah, we got you. Oh, technical difficulties. They didn't yeah, teach so- him that in, in uh, you know. <laughs> he had put two on the door of the basement. He had put two uh, fists, and there was an arrow pointing down to the basement. And it's in town. So, uh, 
watching the scorecards if you couldn't handle it on the first floor, if you couldn't figure it out on the first floor. Well, for guys that don't know, that was a tradition in the FBNY. All things were settled, right, in the basement. Yep. You went down there, you settled it up, you came back up, and it was over. That's I saw it. a lieutenant in the fireman go down when I was in 210, go downstairs, and came up, and that was it. They went downstairs. Some guys did good down the basement. Some, Some guys, guys didn't do good in the basement. The basement. No. Some needed a little help on the way up. You back, Tony? I'm back. I don't know what. I think my phone rang and screwed it all up. Sorry. Oh, man. They didn't teach you that in the FEMA task force, bro? So one of one of my better <laughs> Tony stories, if you don't oh, mind you me. Another one? Oh, I got a go. good one. I got so a lot of Tony This one worked out well, too, for Tony. Um, uh, Not that I would have won the fight, Tony, but uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um. Tony's uh, now a captain, and he's covering. I, when Tony left 288, I believe I took your spot, Tony. Uh, if not you, then Sal Civitello. But it was kind of right around that so, same time. Um, no, I think it was you. Thank God. Yeah, thank, thank <laughs> you. Sal Civitello. So uh, when Tony got promoted to captain, I come, I come into 288 as a lieutenant. Now uh, Tony comes back in the sock, and he's working in uh, all four. Mm. We'll get to the full word later. Uh, <laughs> Where is that, Tony? Where were you working? <laughs> Tom? You know, that other company on Queen's <laughs> Oh! <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway, um, we go to this fire, and it's a private dwelling. It's going pretty good. We know we got really good body of fire on the first floor, and there's good signs of extension on the second floor. So um, I know that Tony's in the building, but I don't really know where he is. It's one of these situations where everywhere you opened up on the first floor, we had fire. Um, and I knew that the rescue was called. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. Pete, you missed it. <laughs> so I, the company that the co company that Tony was commanding was calling for the line. So the line would go over to the left side, put some fire out. Then they would come over to the right side and put some fire out. Um, Any and urgency was, given? No urgency. No, he wasn't working. Judge Stuff said that. Oh. Don't say ah, name. Don't name drop. So <laughs> go ahead. Um, so anyway, we get we get through the first floor pretty much, and all the fire is out on the first floor. Now Tony, um, his knowledge level is is up here, right? And, and his experience is is definitely up there. Hype. But Tony himself Hype. is not real. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was. I could see. Oh, that. Good shot. I like it. You're amazing, Tony. Hype. I'm sorry. Knowledge. <laughs> but going back to our 270 days, we had some pretty big guys there. Um, you know, there's four or five guys that were taller than me, and I'm six two. Tony sometimes could be caught standing on something. Tall or white? <laughs> <laughs> Six to both ways. Right, so every now and then Tony would be caught standing on something, and we would just tease him about it that he was trying to, you know, find his equal amongst us. So anyway, <laughs> I don't believe it, Tom. <laughs> so we're in this fire now, and the fire is now knocked down on the first floor. It's starting to lift, and I see Tony standing on one step up, going up to the second floor, and I just kind of thought. Tony's being Tony. He's standing on this because we're about to talk. And what I realized was he was actually <laughs> getting a little bit of a head start to go to the second ah. floor because he was just waiting on the nozzle man. So I go to talk to Tony. I'm like, Tony, what, what do you think? What do we got? And Tony turns, looks over my shoulder, says, you, come here. And it wound up being the nozzle man. The kid followed Tony up the stairs. You know, the kid from this engine company follows Tony up the stairs. And I just stood there. And over walks the engine officer, and he says to me, that rescue officer just stole Whoa! my guy. I just stole my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just stole my guy. <laughs> that officer just stole my guy. I looked over him. I said, well, he fucked me too. So, so, you know. <laughs> and I walked out. That, that was it. I knew the second floor wasn't enough for the company. <laughs> we, we got oh, yelled at. Oh, we got a viewer question. Did you remember? This is coming from Gerald LaRue. Got a question for you fellas from Southern Texas here. Uh, should volunteer firemen have the same respect as paid? He's volunteer in South Texas. What's y'all's opinion? Absolutely. Fire is fire, bro. That's my opinion. Whether you're getting paid or you're not getting paid, you're doing the same job, brother. Agree. Then I, I agree. Show the man by the man, not by the, uh, the right. paycheck. Yeah, man, they're doing the same thing. We're getting paid, they're not getting paid. And you know what? They're running away, sitting, eating dinner with their kids, and a run comes in, and they got to run out of the house and go uh, answer the call. We're we put fires out with manpower, 75 guys. They they could show up with four guys. Yeah, five four guys, guys, and they're fighting the same fire. So absolutely, brother. Keep Texas. doing what you're doing. Texas? 
Holy dog Holy shit. Holy shit. Where's in Texas? <laughs> oh, I've seen a horse on you. A horse on you, fella. <laughs> hey, Tone. Yeah. You know what story I have, right? With Which me? one? Yeah. When you yelled at me? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of the times that you that, yelled at me? That, uh, you, tell you know what's funny is, you know, we start thinking about people with anger issues, and I think it's just offices of 288. I don't know. I don't know. I just think after a while, you just get tired of... Uh... But my one of my favorite stories with Tony, I tell this story all the time. Uh, when they made the squads, it was 288 and, and 270, and then they basically split the borough in half. Um, and there was an engine company that's pretty close to, to 270, um, which... 270 could probably get there faster than us, but because they split the borough in half, they gave it to us. So they always wanted it. We always wanted it. And we never gave it to them until just recently. But uh, in this particular case, there was a pin job, a uh, car accident, and 315 had the job. So we turn out for the, for, for the, for the uh, extrication. And we're coming up onto the highway, and you could probably picture this, Tom. We're coming up on the ramp on 69th Street, and as soon as I get on the LIE, the Long Island Expressway, pretty far out, you know, maybe like uh, two exits, I could see a pretty good plume of smoke. It looks like, you know, like a good job or something going on. So I get on the radio and I'm like, Squad 288 to Queens, uh, you know, you got a box out by 108. It looks like you got some, you got a job there or something. And he's like, yeah, 10 uh, we're getting numerous calls for, uh, for a fire. So, of course, what do I say, Tom? 288. You say, to... uh, yeah, take us off the pin job and put us on the fire. You want us to take us off the pin job. I want to go to that fire. I want to go to that fire over there. Yeah. yeah. So I say, uh, two, you know, 288, can you assign us to that box? You know, and he says, negative 288, you know, remain, you know, remain on your, you know, present assignment. So I'm like, you know, of course I'm like, shit, Cliffy's looking at me. So we start, you know, we're, we're driving down. I know Rescue 4. Sticking Whoa! Oh! So now we're getting close to the box. And generally, you know, Tone, you know this, Vin, you know this, Kev, you know this. Most of the time we don't get into these pin jobs because the guys are good with the tools and they pop the door and the people are out. So now, of course, I'm praying for them to pop the door. So the battalion gets on the radio. I hear them trying to get on the radio because now they give a 1075 for the box at this box. All of a sudden I hear the battalion come on and I'm thinking, all right, he's going to say, release the special units and we get off the highway and start heading to the fire. And he says, we still have two people trapped and blah, blah, blah. I'll have the special units continue. So we're like, Oh my God. So now we turn around and now we're heading back. And now they assigned squad 270 to the fire. So now we're going to basically do this, like crossing each other. So I know that they're flying because they realize that, the people are going to get out of the car any minute, you know. Sure as heck, you know, maybe like a minute later, the battalion gets on and says, we got the people removed. Uh, you can return special units. So now there's a lot of commotion on the radio. I get on the radio. I'm like, 88, the Queens, assign us to our box to fire. He's like, stand by. Queens to squad 270. What's your location? And now Tony says... I'm at the LIE and 108th Street. Which now, is probably which bullshit. Is, right, right. Anyway, which is kind of like where I was. <laughs> yeah. so, allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, right. <laughs> allegedly. So now. I was telling the whole time, boys, you better move, man, because I know <laughs> Luis already made the turn. Oh, He's dude. He's already on the way. We got to be 84 run. before these guys get there. <laughs> so, of course, he gets tries to call me and say 288. Stay in service. So it's like 288. I'm like 288, 1084, which means I'm already at the box. I throw the receiver. <laughs> We're already there. I get off, run to the box. As it turns out, it's like, I don't know, like four like garages in the back of like a whole block, you know, all the way around. So there's really not much going on. They put the fire, you know, it wasn't much, you know, uh, just a couple of garages. So with that, I see Tony and, and 270. They come up to the chief where I am, like two minutes later. So he's kind of looking at me. I'm kind of looking at him, you know, a little stink guy, you know. Well, you were looking at me. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> so the 
chief says to me, Louis, do me a favor. Just go up in this building here. Just make sure back to the building, you know, the siding was melted or whatever. It wasn't much happening. So we go into the top floor of this building, two and a half story. Make a long story long. When we were up there, one of the guys at 288 says to me, hey, Lou, look at that in the back, in the building across to the other block, the back of the building, you could see some smoke, like starting to like pick up a little bit of steam, like out of pretty good area you know is that a detail the guy that yes it is a detail. a detail i don't want to say his name or a detail <laughs> or 75 year old detail. Hey, Tony, don't get along. Don't say sorry, i didn't want to say i, I didn't say it. Rhymes, allegedly rhymes with right oh no i just said it go ahead so allegedly this detail points out that there's some fire that looks like some smoke coming out of this thing so i look and i'm like yeah that looks pretty good then you know, we do what we're doing. I turn around two minutes later, and now I know we got something in the, it's in the over there. So I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We go down the stairs. I'm like, do not say a word. We go <laughs> up to the chief. I go, chief, looks like you got some smoke around the back. And we're going to go check it out for you. He's like, okay, Lou, thanks a lot. So now we're doing like the fast, you know, walk. We have to go all the way around the block. Just as we're getting to the door, the foster door, somebody in the back says, Looks like you got fire in the building in the pier. We pop the door, go upstairs, poke a hole. It's in the car block. I'm like, 288. He's like, woohoo! I'm like, yeah, we're, we're like, hey, we got fire in the car club. He's like, all right, I'm sending 270. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending 270 over with the line. So they come up. So now we raced each other to get to this box. They come up with the line. We spend the whole time up there. I don't know how we had a couple of rooms going in the cockloft, whatever. Good job. Guys were happy, you know. But for some reason, I'm still pissed off. That Why he, couldn't you leave yeah, it there? I can't, I can't couldn't do, leave I couldn't it. Do it. I'm still pissed off at him that he showed up. He shouldn't have never showed up. I would have never did it. The whole thing, right? So after the whole thing is done, I come out. The chief says, you guys can take up. And basically, our rigs were kind of like right next to each other, the backs of them. So everybody's getting undressed. And Tone and, and his guys are getting undressed. And I take my stuff off, and next thing I know, I'm like right in front of him, in front of his guy. And I'm giving, you know, I got my guinea up, and I'm, yeah, I got going? the finger poke, and I'm like, you know, Don, I would never did this to go. And then, you know, I'm going through this whole thing. And I swear to God, he looked at me the whole time, never said, you know, he let me vent. And I don't know if it, I, this is the way I remember it. It probably could be a little different, but he said something like, Lou, you know, I love you. I understand your passion. I understand why you're pissed off. But if you keep yelling at me in front of my men, there's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you actually remember it pretty well, Louis. You remember uh, well, it very well. Pretty much it, right? <laughs> but, you know, I, I let you give it to me because, you know, you're a good man. And I understood. And we would have done the same exact thing, you know. It was just you know, like, you, you know, and, and that was the thing. You know, like, it was so maniacal to get to fires that it was like we'll race and we're going across the borough to where we shouldn't be but hey oh too bad you're on the pit job see ya enjoy three <laughs> see you later. did you flip him the bird as you no, go I, by the pin job no, dude i swear to, and you know what was the best was i was so like irate and i just could see it in his face that he let me go and then after he said that it like i just was like you know, I was just like diffused. Hey, Tom, did you see the vein in the yeah. neck? Was it pulsating? <laughs> if he would have poked yeah, me in the neck, he, 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 he was fired up. Man. But I had to kind of do all I could not to laugh because you know, <laughs> I lose my crackers. But he was so fucking fired up. And what am I going to say? Like, yeah, yeah, too bad. Like, he was right. But he was so like, I wasn't giving up the fire now either. I got to sign the box too. Now it was like, kill or be killed. Sorry, bro. I love you. <laughs> Didn't he get in trouble in 103 for doing the same thing, bro? Except it was with a deputy chief, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not good with chiefs. He was finger <laughs> or, or captains. Or dispatches. Or dispatches. <laughs> what else? I think who are you finger poking? I'm not saying anything. Don't say his Allegedly. name. Allegedly. What did it rhyme with? <laughs> Butler? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't Butler? No, uh, not him. I'm was, not saying. Tony, do you know that story? I do. I can't remember the chief's name, but uh, I do That's remember the don't ask, don't ask. Don't ask Chief Yak. He he always breaks my really. Like that. Yeah, it, it'll it'll come to me. Yeah, Listen, say. we have a little thing going on here, Tony. Like he at one of our other uh, segments when we did on Spotlight on One Hundred Three, 
Mm-hmm. He was saying he was claiming or boasting that they were the busiest. No, no, I, up. You I said, said it. It's on one, tape. Of, one of the busiest. Uh, one of the busiest. I think you said the busiest fire company the busiest in, the in the world. world. The world. world. Maybe. Now I think the company that you work for, the second one after uh, you left, after you left two seventy. Yeah. You know which one that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the one that that has a number two. Yes. <laughs> Actually, we're doing a spotlight on them tomorrow. Uh, in Rescue 2. Whoa! Oh, I can't feel my face. I would think that they were the best, the busiest fire company in the world. Would you agree or disagree? Uh, when it comes to fire duty, ah, I, I think it's unparalleled. Right. So I went, now, I back and to my brother Lewis's defense, Sheffield Avenue does the most runs out of anybody. <clears throat> and then you mix in all the fire duty that they, they were doing. But if you want to just go pure fire duty... Bergen Street, well, it's not Bergen Street anymore, but Bergen Street has its hands now. Well, I would say that when people talk about the busiest, like around the country, they're always talking about runs. But when we, in the FDNY, when you talk about busy, it's it's never about ah. it's never about runs, right? It's always about who right. goes to the most fires. Now, Tony, do, do you think we should count the runs, the guys that left a certain firehouse and they're doing those runs someplace else? Should we count those runs too? Like, you know, when Chef... <laughs> <laughs> and everybody bailed the ship. Do we count those runs too? Like rats off a sinking ship? You mean like that? <laughs> like uh, runs with man your audience? Oh, that guy? <laughs> Listen, I went back. Yeah, I'm and- kind of partial to runs don't count. You know, I'm just trying yeah, to help my right. brother out. Well, I went back and pulled up rescues. We're doing the spotlight on Rescue 2 tomorrow, and I pulled up their numbers over the last 20 years. And if you put the, the amount of 1075s, which are working fires, right? They average 3.7 working fires a day over the last 20 years, bro, which is a hell of a lot of fires every day, right? 3.7? Yeah, that, that, yeah, I mean, think about it. If you went to three jobs every tour you worked, other than being, you know, beyond happy and loving life, you'd be pretty beat down. Yeah, you know, it, I especially mean, if they're good job. <clears throat> you look at some company, you know, some places around the country, and they don't do three in a in a uh, a year. Fires. That's twenty seven thousand fires. What years. in twenty years? Yeah. Right. Wow. They don't do that. You know, they don't do three fires in six months. You know, so three fires a day is pretty busy in my book. That might be the busiest fire company in the world. Just exactly. saying. Well, it's easy to get in there. <laughs> how did you? How I'm did never going to get used just, to that. Listen, that I'm too just, funny, man. How did you get in there, bro? How does a guy go from 270 to rescue? Oh, I said. Do you it. want me to do it again? I said. Uh, it. Uh, so, how does a guy go from squad 270 to R1? Do to do I got to do it again? You want me to do it again? How do you do that? Show it. Tony, I've never done this before. <laughs> am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? Oh, Tommy, you're killing me. You're killing me, Lois. Was there anything like that? Uh, no. <laughs> what? A lot had to do with luck. Let's just no, say I, it that oh, way. Oh, I, I'm going to raise a show of hands. I'm calling shenanigans. Anybody else? Luck? <laughs> luck? Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of luck. It's a lot of things. What was the luck? <clears throat> well, I'll give, I'll give you, you want the rundown of how it happened? Yeah, it's, it's timing. It's timing. It's it is time. luck. Well, luck, for me, listen, I had a blessed career, so a lot of it's luck. Vinny was there. He can, he can, he can attest to some of it. I, I got to squad 270 as a young, snot-nosed fireman because – I was lucky and knew the captain. Yeah, I was really into the job, and I had a lot to prove, and it took me a while to prove myself. I think I eventually proved myself without a doubt. Yeah, but um, timing, too. That's timing because they made the squad, <clears throat> right? So that was time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know the guy. It, it's who you know sometimes, obviously. It's a combination of everything, but it's the timing. They made a squad. If they didn't make a squad, you could still, you know, who knows what you would have done. You know what I mean? And listen, right. little history, okay. just going back. I don't know. Vinny, Vinny can attest to this. We had to go through a tryout. You guys remember? Yeah. You were original members of 288. You had to go through a tryout. And the yeah. captains had to evaluate you. You went down to the rock, you know, in back in the days when actually, you know, you know, merit mattered and it was a big deal. 
Um, you know, we went through a tryout. The captains all kind of wrote wrote down the names of the guys they wanted. And, you know, was, lucky for it me. It was like Tony. It was like playing. It was like a dodgeball game. The captains <laughs> went around the table and they picked the guys they want, you know. Yeah. And then Jugdish, Mahab, yeah. and, Lala, and Lonnie were the last that's guys. Crazy, picked, right? <laughs> hey, run. listen, that's exactly how it happened. And I found out through the the yeah. famous Captain Murphy from Squad 288. I had made his list, too. So. If I didn't get to 270, I would have been in the crazy eights with you guys. Wow. Look at um, that. But, I, you know, you, you, I, I got to go to 270 then. And then, um, God rest his soul, very illustrious, you know, uh, legend in the job, uh, former number two guy, uh, Terry Hatton, who, who became the captain of the big city rescue. Oh! Yeah. called his good friend Tommy Richardson and said, hey, I'm looking for guys. Uh -huh. Well, again, luck have it, he told me, you should go interview with him. And I said, well, you know, I really want to go to, to Bergen Street someday. That's my goal in life, blah, 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 blah. Well, Vinny can tell you that, you know, Captain Richardson held, a, you know, wielded a big stick. And when he spoke, you listened. And, uh, you know, he, he always gave us great advice. So I said, all right, I go interview with him. And I did. And somehow, some way, he, he took a young snot-nosed kid and I got to go over to the big city. So how uh, long were you there, bro, before you said, I think I want to go to Bergen Street? Well, I was in the big city for about three years. And what happened yeah, was... I mean, they refer to those three years as the asbestos years, right? Nothing nothing <laughs> burned? <laughs> nothing well, during those three years? <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you a couple of good, funny stories, right? So here I am, a young idiot, right? I get to go to a, 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 a rescue company. Oh, <laughs> All right, we're going to have to pick a new number. Take a sip, a little one. And here I am, and every one of you guys sitting at that table can attest to us. What did we do our whole careers, man? We chased fire. I got to go to fires. I got to go to fires. But when I first got to, to the big city, you know, they kind of have like their roller coaster, big peaks, big valleys when it comes to fire. They're more known for their technical rescue work than they are for heavy duty fire duty. So here I am. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm not going to any fires, man. I, I got to go back to 270. 270 was going to a, a fair amount of fires. They were doing well. And I'm shaking in my boots and I go to the captain of, of, of the company and here, I, I, I shouldn't even been there in the first place. Who was the captain there? That was Hatton? Hatton. Yeah, Harry Hatton. Hatton. I shouldn't even been there. And I'm like, yeah, Cap, I, I think I want to go back. So I'm figuring he's throwing me out of my ass. I'm going to be transferred by 0900. I'll be gone the next day. And he just said, listen, I understand. I know where your head's at. I, you know, I, I came from where you want to go. Just give it six more months and see what happens. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Gave it six more months, went to a bunch of fires, you know, over in Manhattan, they're, they're really uh, sought after, and Manhattan's a really strange and wild place, though there's not that many fires, but when they come, and Vinny knows, because he was in Manhattan before I was, when there's fires, they can be wicked, and, and you know, it's, you talk about, you know, uh, having multiple fires, the, the most multi-cylinder fires I had, where I would go through a whole cylinder, come out, get them, change my SCBA, go back in, come back out. Of course, it was the same people changing my cylinders, but, you know, hey. Um, <laughs> I'm, out, I'm out on that. Probably, <laughs> probably the first new <laughs> truck. <And run>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those, those were the type of fires you had in Manhattan. And uh, then, unfortunately, 9-11 happened. And uh, when the new regime came in, um, you know, without mentioning names, let's just say uh, my personality and the new regime's personality didn't kind of mesh. And again, I was fortunate and I got a phone call from some of the guys that I knew over there. Because you guys know we, we would get detailed through the system and you would work and they would say, hey, I heard you're not, uh, you know, too happy. Uh, why don't you come over and talk to the captain? And I did. And uh, somehow, some way, I ended up on Bergen Street. Was Ruvalo the so captain of 9-11, Tony? 
Say again? Was Ruvalo the captain all through 9-11? Yes. Yes, he was. And after. So you went to see him, and then that was it? You were over there? Uh, pretty soon after, yeah. Pretty when, soon you after. Got, when you got uh, when you got there and the lieutenant came up, was there any thought in your head like uh, you might turn it down to stay at R2? Yeah, it, it was, it was, you know, it was, you know, unfortunately, because of everything that happened, they, they were making massive promotions. So I had told Ruvalo that I was on the list. And, you know, when they, we looked at my number and we figured out what, you know, his history was, oh, you got, you got, you know, three or four years before you get made. I wasn't way up, you know, way up on the top of the list. Um, but unfortunately, after 9-11 and everything that happened, uh, the, the classes of lieutenants that they were making were enormous. So, uh, yeah, I, I did. I really did. And, um, you know, I've said what it a bunch you, of times. What made you, know, you change, you know, what made you go that way, bro? You know, taking the lieutenants <sighs> instead of saying it all too. You know, <clears throat> when you, again, I, I, I reached back and I talked to a guy who, who was my mentor, who was Tommy Richardson. So whenever I was perplexed or confused or whatever, and he basically said, listen, man, you know, you got to you got to make a decision sometimes. It's not always right for you. <clears throat> what's right for your family, you know, and you're going to get promoted. You're going to make more money. And, you know, a guy like you, if you do the right thing, you'll be able to come back to sock. And I kind of went back and forth with it. And I thought about, you know, maybe I'll just delay it. And I just figured, you know what, man, rip off the Band-Aid and go. And uh, that's what I did. And there was plenty of times. I could say when I first initially got, I'll tell you a funny story. I first initially got promoted, right? I'm, I, I was in Rescue 2. I'm on top of the world. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh boy. Sorry. Is he drinking? He, is he drinking? He's drinking. Oh, I'm drinking. So I get promoted out of Bergen Street, and I get assigned to the 13th Division as of a course. lieutenant. So... <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, past this before. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tony, where do you want to go? Staten Island or the 13th Division? <laughs> you want to go to the first, the third? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the 13th. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Lewis, you know I can see it. Right? Yeah, 24 truck. <laughs> or 13th Division. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. So I go to the 13th Division. I digress. Go and ahead. a rite of passage in the 13th Division is to go work in 329 engines which is, you know, down in Breezy Point. They're really, I think, technically not on the New York City Fire Department, <laughs> but they're considered in the New York City Fire Department. They're FDNY-ish. Right. And I don't even know if you want to put the ish after it. So here I am, my first tour as a lieutenant, pouring rain. You know, they're on a golf course or wherever it is they are. And I walk in, the, 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 the officer who's assigned, he runs right out the door. Okay, see you. Proof. I'm like, okay, you know. And one of the things I said to myself is I'll never say I'm here for the day. So now, and we're used to it, right? And, and, and you remember, Kev, roll call was one of my favorite things to do in this whole world. So now it's roll call. So some guys at home, one guy's at home, one guy, <laughs> one guy's at the store, one guy's on the seventh hole, <laughs> one guy's playing golf. Yeah, in the seventh I hole. come out and there's no one. I'm like, where is everybody, you know? So I'm like, yeah, roll call. Like, one guy comes out, rub it up. He's like, what? yeah, what's up, Lou? I'm like, I don't know. It's 9 o'clock. It's the start of the day. <laughs> you know, yeah, what's up? I go, I'd like to give the assignments and see who's who. Yeah, all right. Don't worry. Just give them to me. I'll take care of it. I'm like, oh, okay, great. This is going to be great. <laughs> I'm just now like, I sit in the office and, like, not within 10 minutes, the phone rings. It's the chief from the 4-7 battalion. That was the battalion that covered the Rockaways. And he starts barking that he needs some report for BI. Now, first off, you guys remember, we weren't doing any type of building inspection, BI, in special operations. So I didn't know anything about that crap as it was. And I'm like, okay, chief, no problem. I'll get right back to you. Just get settled in. Give me a couple minutes. I'll get right back to you. So now... I make an announcement. I have to go out and make the announcement over the bitch box because there's no one around. And I get a guy to come down, and I'm like, listen, the chief's looking for this report. At the time, the 13th Division was doing this thing with window bars 
and they wanted to put the window bars in the critical incident, you know, dispatch system, the SIDS, remember that? And uh, they wanted all the companies when they went out on BI to put in SIDS for all these window bars. And they were supposed to do it for their district and have a certain amount done per se. So now I, I asked the guy, go, look, the chief just called. I can't find the paperwork. Where, where's the paperwork? Where's your BI paperwork? Guy's like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I can't help you. I'm like, great. So now I got to call the lieutenant who left because he's the only guy that's assigned that's actually working. Who lives in Jersey. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I say to him, I go, look, the four seven just called. They're looking for this report. Just tell me how much you got done. I'll type it up for you. He goes, yeah, yeah, we didn't do none. I go, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, we did none, zero. I go, okay, so just give me a number that you want me to put in the report for you. He goes, no, we didn't do none. I go, so you want me to type zero? <laughs> I go, yeah. Zero? I'm like, all right, you got it. So I typed the report. I sent it over to the 47. What do you think? His fucking headlights on fire. And he calls me back in like 10 minutes. And he's screaming at me. You gotta be kidding me. And I go, Chief, I said I would never. And this is like 25 minutes into my first (laughs) call. I said, Chief, I would never say this. But I'm only here for the day. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. I hang up the phone. I just got yelled at like three times by a chief. It's 25 minutes into my first tour as lieutenant. I'm sitting at the desk like this. I'm like, a month ago, I was a fireman on Bergen Street. And now I'm not even on the New York City Fire Department anymore. I'm on some shit. My wife company. They can't even go out on BI and look at a damn oh, window yes. bar and some chief is going to come and stab me in the heart in about 15 minutes. But other than that, it was awesome. Becoming Tony, a remember, Tony, remember yeah. a couple of years later then uh, we talk about always chasing fires. You know, we want to get into every fire you can get and we're fighting over boxes. So what we're doing this new map system, you know, that they're going to redivide the companies. Uh, and Tony's involved, and, and Evans was uh, had already uh, retired, so our captain, Captain Evans. So I had to go to this meeting and sit in, and uh, we're fighting over everything. And then Breezy comes up, and uh, and Tony was like, "Well, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want it. We'll give it, a, we'll give it to Schneider." <laughs> luckily, two fifty two wasn't at the meeting. We're like, they can have Breezy. <laughs> they were like, and that was great. They got it. Uh, he's like, oh, look, a bald eagle. <laughs> <laughs> look over here. Look over here. I'm taking my usual bathroom break. Uh, yeah. Bathroom break. So, uh, the is that even allowed in the podcast? Yeah, you can sit in the middle. <laughs> Lenny Leibold, your, your. Oh, Lenny? Yeah, yeah. Lenny has a question. Are any of you guys volunteer firefighters when they get there? Yeah, I would say uh, in Long Island, a lot of guys volunteer. How about you guys? That's I, I I always grew up I grew up in the city. When I moved upstate, I didn't uh, I didn't join the volunteer fire department. I was I moved out to Long Island. Uh, the opposite. I didn't I wasn't when I began. So I have more FDNY service than than volunteer service. But uh, moved out to my town. Didn't know a soul. It was a good way to serve my community and and you know get to know a couple of people because I didn't know a soul. <laughs> Tom, do you do, you don't do anything down where you are, right? He's in the coast. I don't any law, but to be honest with you, man, um, I was a volunteer before I was in the FDNY. You know, the question earlier, too, was, you know, um, is there a same level of respect? Um, I joined the volleys. The volleys kind of exposed me to the FDNY, exposed me to, you know, that hunger to go to fires and, and how great it was. Uh, then I started teaching out at the fire academy. You know, the one thing is, is with, you, you know, we, we were fortunate, man. We worked in, in, a, in a fire department. We got paid to do it. Like, you know, I don't know if you can have any better job. But 80% of this country is covered by volunteers. So, you know, you got to give them credit, you know, for the people that are into it and the people that want to do it. Um, yeah, for nothing. But, yeah, I started in the volunteer service, but I'm not doing it anymore, you know. 
Is that where you met? Was the, uh, if I can't go to fires with guys like you, I'm not going to fires anymore, you know? Oh. A salute. A salute. A whole dream we booked. That was like the it's tender a, moment. I would say most guys who grew up in Long Island, a lot of them get, it seems to me anyway, I don't know facts, but it seems to me that they get involved in the volunteers first. <clears> and then, you know, if you grow up in the city, you, there is no volunteers. So you don't, you don't know anything better. Except is this a good way to breathe? Oh, except breathe. Is what a good. So if I'm a young kid looking to become a firefighter, a good place to start is volunteer. Well, oh yeah, you learn. You won't. It won't give you a fast track to the FDNY. The only fast track to that now is going through EMS. Like Triple T. Yeah, man, that's the way to get in. That's the back door now. Tom, what are you doing down here in Ocean? What are you doing? You slapping the ball around? You hitting the? You hitting the links at all? What are you doing? Hitting the gym. No, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big golfer. Though I should get into it because where I live is like surrounded by golf courses. But uh, yeah, I say uh, being retired is like being in prison. You go to, you go to the gym or work out every day. But other than that, it's good. Well, you better start um, slapping it around because me and Vin are newly re retired. So we're gonna come down and uh, we're gonna slap it around a little bit. Can you play golf? Come on nice? down. You guys are gonna have to show me because I'm like a hack. Some guys tried to show me some stuff and. I don't know. Like, yeah, golf bet. is more of a game of finesse, and I, I, I can't finesse anything. Yeah, I, I like suck at it. I'm really dope. <laughs> Somebody, but, uh, <laughs> somebody's got a brand new Chevy Trail Boss that's uh, Whoa, got plenty man. of room for clubs. For, for, a, guy, for a guy that's on a fixed income, Tony, fixed income. some guy just brought a truck. To get Tone, I'm still driving a 1995. Not Now you're not. I, I didn't even pick the truck up. <clears throat> He's driving it's 25 a 25 years old. It he's driving a 1995, but his wife's driving a Mercedes. That don't count. He's on a fixed income, though, Bob. <laughs> you know, you got to. It was your parting gift, right, Lewis? That's what they say. The parting gift. My partner's going to buy it for me. Who? Cricket? Who? What? <laughs> what do you know? Tell you, it's getting salty. Must be doing pretty good. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. That's my favorite one. Uh. I love that thing. Listen, what we have coming up, just a little preview for you guys out there. We're going to have a contest. The salty, what is it? The salty dog face looking. The saltiest guy you can find in your firehouse. You're going to send pictures in, and we're going to vote on them. Free swag stuff. We're going to send some swag stuff. Uh, yeah, there's free, there's $500, $500 gift certificate. Really? Winner? Yeah. Five. Oh, yes, yeah, you, you said, you guys said are you what are we we're giving away five? Yeah, I mean, five? Yeah, we're sending five. It, <laughs> to one person. <laughs> we're sending you send us pictures of the saltiest guy or gal in your firehouse. We'll vote on the top six, then we're gonna put it out to you guys. It's be on Instagram. And you, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram, and then Salty you guys Dolphin. vote on the top six. I'm gonna give out don't tell my pot. We're gonna give out how much? Five hundred dollar gift certificate. The guys are crazy. Really? It's cramping up. <laughs> so Tony, any any uh any time you coming up soon to visit or what? Uh probably not anytime soon, but uh you know, I, I come up uh, periodically to come up. I have to say, uh I live down by Ocean City, Maryland now. It's uh yeah, let's say a very different lifestyle down here, but nice. It, you know, calm. For me, I needed to calm down in the old days. You know what I'm saying? Are you, are you coming up for the for our, our party? You better come up for our party. Retirement party? Uh, which one is that now? Tell me. Don't give them the date and the location on, on, on the For me uh, and Vinny. We'll have 2,000 uh, people. For you and Vinny, I will definitely be there. Yes. All right, here's one, here's one more question for you, Tony. Shoot. Give me the saltiest guy that you ever worked with, bro. The guy, like, you're going down the hallway. That's the guy you want. Coming next you. to you. No, not coming for oh. you necessarily, but yet that's the guy you want crawling down the hall of the hallway with. Wow. Don't, don't use me. Exclude me. Because I don't want to, I don't, you know, I don't, don't want to be back. Don't use me. That's funny. You didn't have to crawl. You could just walk down. Uh, high chair. <laughs> wow. That that's like, you know, I work with some Pretty amazing guys, man. To try to pick through all the guys that I work with. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty tough. I know who he's gonna say it's my same guy. I know in the in the one 
uh, Joe Angelini was about one of the saltiest looking. He is the saltiest. He guy is a salty ever. looking guy. Absolutely. Joe Angelini had to be up there. That guy looked like well, he was 300 years old when he was like 40. 40. Nice guy. Very nice. Cigarette hanging I out. I tell you mouth. what, that that guy had set, uh, you know, you know, like you know, when you have things in your career, certain things that happen, or you run across people or bosses or whatever it may be that just have like a profound effect on you, you mm -hmm. know? So Joe Angelini was one of those guys. And after I met and dealt with Joey, um, it kind of changed my, my view a little bit of, on how I would approach people. And, and the reason why is this, I tell you, when I got to rescue one, I had a oh. lot of Oh, sorry. <laughs> when I got to the big city, I had a whopping five years on the job. Really? So I shouldn't even been there. Bob. I didn't even deserve to be there. But again, we discussed how that all happened. But then again, you know what, Tony? It says a lot about you, bro. Well, maybe. You know, I, I, I try to stay humble and I still see you, Lewis. <laughs> you just told me my son <laughs> Gavin's watching. <laughs> oh, sorry. Gavin. Close your eyes. <laughs> so, so needless to say, I walk in the firehouse five five years on the job, and I go into the kitchen in, in this storied firehouse, and there's Joe Angelini. Now, at the time, he had just under 40 years on the job. 40! How many years Not in the 40. rescue? Oh, I didn't want it. Twenty of them in the rescue. Oh boy. <laughs> How many years in the big R? One. Twenty. Wow. He had twenty years, and before that, and Vinny probably knows more about this than I do. But he was in one truck in Manhattan uh -huh. when one truck was the only tower ladder, because seven truck was the tower ladder, right, man? Yeah. Yep. So one truck when he was in it, was the only tower ladder in the city. Yeah, so they were going to he every... He was on the job when there was no radios. No, right. Zero radios. So they got special called everywhere. So one truck at the time was very busy. No more, but at the time, because they were the only tower ladder in the city. That's crazy. So here I am, some young snot-nosed kid, and here's a guy with 20 years on, on 43rd Street. And that guy treated me and some of the other younger guys with nothing but respect never yelled at us never talked down to us nothing and always was willing to you know help us and teach us now here's a guy we would sit down and he would he was notorious for eating really really slow like we would be done with the meal <laughs> and gone and he'd still be at the table so he would know that he ate slow before he would sit down to eat. He would try to go wash dishes. Forty years on the job. Forty years on the job, and he's in the sink. Yeah. He would well. He would try to go in the sink, <clears throat> and then we would run over there. Then we kind of got like you know a group of us said, "Hey, we knew that as we were cooking the meal, we just washed everything before we even called Chow because That's we knew crazy. he would come in and he would try to wash the dishes. Forty years, yeah. and." He never, ever worked 24s. Guy would go home to see his Great wife point. in between every tour all the time. Great so point. All those um, guys, oh, they did that. All the, all the time, guys, they always work straight tours. And, and one of the things, and Vinny can attest to this, um, Manhattan is a lot of stairs, man. And when the elevators are out, hey, guess what? Too bad. And oh, no. so, so what he used to do, which was pretty amazing, like, and he was an older guy, like you said. And, you know, when, when he passed away on 9-11, he was in his 60s. When I talked to him, I said, Joey, you got 40 years on the job. How much longer do you want to do? And he looked me dead in the eye and he said, Tom, if I could do 50 years, I'd be happy. I'm like, 50 years? Now, at the time, I was young. I'm like, I hope I live 50 years. Nonetheless, <laughs> do 50 years on the fire department. No, he, he so, definitely looked that. I mean, if you had to pick a... That might be the saltiest yeah, guy, Yeah, if you bro. look at a guy... I mean, I post right? a lot I'm of... I'm in the 500. 
Yeah. Evo. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and, and you yeah. know what? He, he used to wear these, like, you know, like, you know, all the fancy gloves we had. And we all had, you yeah, know, right. None we, of that shit. fancy shit. And I remember in one of the previous podcasts, Lou, when you were talking about your rope, you know, we all had fancy shit, right? He used to wear these, like, green gloves that he got from some person that was in the military that was like a pilot. Yeah. And those were the gloves that he wore. They were like, <laughs> oh, I know. they were like oh, super I thin. They weren't even Home Depot yeah. specials. But when we had to do a lot of stairs, he would walk up a flight, walk over, walk to the next stairwell, yeah, walk up a flight, over. walk over. So he would not get winded. Yeah. And you'd turn around and you'd run up the stairs and you'd be like, uh, uh, uh. you know, you you thought your heart was going to fly out of your mouth and you turned to your right and there he was, Joey Angelini. So the most salty guy I worked with on this planet and the guy I, I, I would say had a profound effect, Joe Angelini. God rest his soul. Yep. Nice. $500 gift certificate for Vinny. What about you? <laughs> the saltiest guy? I mean, I would have to say it was Coward, Chief Coward. Really? I didn't yeah. think you were going to say that. Yeah, he was. Yeah. That guy was, you know, I was a probie when, I, when he came to 117. And uh, he was a 26 truck in the heyday in uh, Fire Factory. Was he the chief from the 3-9, Louis? He went to the 3-9. That's he ended up. I think he him. saved Louis' ass when uh, he was <laughs> finger poking some chief um, in the street. It's possible that he did. Uh, I think I see him like in the peripheral in mm. the back. And uh, he always had didn't talk much, but when he did, he was a he was a smooth operator. Yeah, right? very smooth, great guy. Always, you know, when you say like, there's somebody in your career that's one of the most influential guys in your career. He was mm -hmm. definitely one of my guys, you know, always looked out for me. And, uh, that's your I, guy. I seen him in a few spots where early on in my career, you know, I was like, wow, I didn't think we could go in there at that time. And, uh, he would be in there, mm. you know, and then I would go in there and I'd be like, Oh, I can go in here. And that's the guy. He was the guy. What about you? <laughs> uh -oh. I got, we got a call in. Uh, Nick Sandrotti, uh, <laughs> but only once we have another TV adds 30 pounds. Uh, so that shot across the bow hit right where I wanted it to. Bam! <laughs> leave it, leave it to him. So who's your guy, bro? Uh, besides Joe Angelini, because I also, I, I didn't work with him, but uh, in seven truck, we had a guy, Richie Muldowney, who, um, Hank Malay, who was on your last, uh, your last podcast. Hank uh, was in Freeport. Mm -hmm. With uh, Hash Hagen and uh, well, maybe Hash wasn't in Freeport. No, no Hash was He was okay. Yeah. So he had Hash Hagen, he had Newberry, um, but Richie Muldowney was was one of the Freeport uh, characters, and uh, and Richie was just a tremendous fireman. Uh, had so much knowledge, so much, uh, but uh, had probably been going to fires. He was in the juniors in Freeport, so Richie probably started going to fires maybe when he was. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Richie was uh, pr a pretty salty looking dude. We used to tease him about his helmet, you know, that he, we called it the Richie Muldowney marshmallow stick, that he must have taken and <laughs> put it on the six foot hook, you know, and held it up there for a couple of minutes. But uh, but obviously he didn't do that. Richie was just a tremendous fireman, was always in the right place. And, uh, you know, you, you, I guess you get salt. After doing it for that many years, you yeah, get man. salty looking. And uh, yep. well, Richie was the guy. Who's your guy? Hank, definitely Hank Malay. And I'll tell you the reason why, bro. When after the Father's Day fire, <clears throat> we were first through at the Father's Day fire. And uh, after I came back to the firehouse, I had a busted kneecap and we found out who passed away. And uh, I kind of broke down in front of Hank and he, he did one of these to me. He's like, listen, <laughs> listen to me. This is, like this, this is not going to make you a better fireman. It's going to make you a more seasoned fireman. I still don't know what that means, but that's what he said to me, bro. <laughs> I took it to, but I went to a couple of good jobs with him, bro. He was no, uh, the guy. impact guy. He was the guy. Imp and I got to say, this is not blowing smoke up his ass. Cover your ears, Tony. Tony Tedeschi, bro. We made impact. Even Pickford here. I didn't work enough with you. We didn't really go to too many jobs. Well, he quit early I did quit. I was yeah. quitter. But, Tony, we made some big impacts at some jobs that we went to, right, bro? Yeah, without a doubt, man. You know, I, like I said before, and it wasn't just blowing some sunshine 
Um, my years at 288 was spectacular. There was always the thought process when uh, Vincent and I were down in 270 that, oh, you know, 270 was so much busier than 288, and we went to more fires. And uh, in the end, that turned out not to be the case. And, you know, up in the area that we covered, uh, you know, with 288 and the 14th Division, there were some areas that it was a good thing that we uh, showed up and the Chiefs were happy. And, um, you know, that was our job, was to fill in the holes and make that impact. And, yeah, uh, you know. Uh, impact. I, I, I impact. My yeah, like the job we had where a certain R, R number, I'm not going to say what it is. They, uh, they ran out of gas. Remember that job I'm talking about? On Northern Boulevard? They were all passed out in the street. Uh, at Gettysburg, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at that one. It was like Gettysburg. Okay. We looked for it, looked like <laughs> bandages, and uh, <laughs> Chief Ferran said, You guys good to go? And we were like, Yeah, man, we're good to go, right? Yeah, then we walked around the rig, grew up, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but <laughs> we weren't gonna let him see yeah. us throw up. Yeah, yeah that was uh, Tony. You, you, uh, you remember an old Tommy Richardson story, uh, you know, the chief operations now, so Tommy, you know, but Chief, when he's in the room, uh. Tommy was uh, was famous for if you're gonna pass out, do it in private. You are not doing that. Wearing a two helmet, you know. So we had a guy, we had a guy, no names, but uh, you could sneeze it. <laughs> I go to an adjoining private dwelling one day, and I'm opening up the, the knee walls up in the attic because we we had some extension out into the uh, into the soffit. So I go up into the attic. I'm in the knee walls. I'm opening up. And I looked down the attic stairs to the second floor, and there's one of our guys passed out on the second floor. So what? I look. Throw it out. Throw the name out. His name's Frank. That's oh. it. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> and he he knows, seemed to fall asleep you know. at all different times, Vincent. What's that? He seemed to fall asleep at all different times. Yeah, yeah. The narcoleptic fire. <laughs> and he had a busted thermostat, so he was always overheating. And that's what happened this day. He overheated? It was, a, it was a warm day, and he overheated. He was sweating. So I knew not to get on the radio and tell the captain that one of our guys. So I went down. I checked on him. I knew he was okay. He was just uh, – so I walked out to the street, and I got face-to-face -face with the captain. I said, uh, Cap, just so you know, Frank passed out. And he goes, yeah, I knew he was going to pass out. That's why I told him to go into the adjoining <laughs> building. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got another up. salty guy. I got to throw it out there. Go ahead. I know it's going to be uh, my brother. 42 years on the job, right? Chief. Chief Kubler, 42 years on the job, and he's staying on. He wants to become a six-decade firefighter, which means he worked in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2010, and 2020s. The chief. Six decades. He don't smile much, but... Uh, he always puts the squad to work. Don't he always puts the squad. He always to puts work. to work, and he would smile whenever we talk badly about you. <laughs> <laughs> tell, oh, you What's your brother doing? You gotta He's retired. You got to tell the story. What story? When you thought he was coming down. Oh, oh that's, that's a good the story. Best story. This you want to hear the story, story, Tony? Dude, this is a great story. Yes, yeah, because I got a good yeah. Chief Kubler and brother Kevin Kubler story too, but this one may be better. So go. This right. is a great so anyway, story. I'm on Fresh Pond Road in Master Throw, and I'm going to the bank right on the corner, right? Now, before that, I'm a buff, so I hear the scanner. I know there's a job, right? I listen to the scanner before I get out of the car. There's a job. So I'm crossing the street, and what do I see? A chief's car coming flying down Fresh Pond Road. And I'm like, holy shit, I think that's the 14th Division. I think it's my brother, right? So I'm standing in the middle of the street. That's now, as he great. goes by, tell, up. Up, tell him what you're wearing. I'm wearing a long... Black leather coat. <laughs> Three quarters. Suspect. It was the eight. Suspect. What was it? The nine? Oh, no. It was two thousand. Uh, I don't know what it was. So as they're screaming by, right, I stand up in the middle of the street. Can you see this? And as he's passing, I go like this. Oh! <laughs> I did one of these, right? As he goes by me, I see it's not my brother in the 14th Division. It's my boy. It was Spillane. It was Spillane. <laughs> he goes like this. He goes... <laughs> Dude, he goes like this. It's one of these. <laughs> and after I, I spoke to him after that, he goes, I said to my aide, I think that's fucking cool. <laughs> Grabbing his balls and giving me the bird. <laughs> and it was, bro. Dude, that is so one of my favorite In a black stories. trench coat. In a black, in a black leather trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> could, you, could you imagine? I got one more for my brother. 
we're going down to the trade center, right? All the time. We used to go what 24 hours on, 25 hours off, or whatever. Yeah, every yeah. three days. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Part of your 24 hours. Now he just became a deputy chief and they sent him down to the trade center. So that. he's running the trade days. center, right? 90 days. I see him there. He's got his brand new shiny white deputy chief hat. Okay. And they have a little building in the corner there. That's his little headquarters there with his guy. It's like the clipboard. Little shack little shack. His, his little aide is holding the clipboard, right? We're on the crater. It looks like a giant crater, bro. And I can see him. It has to be two football fields away, bro. And he's got his fucking binoculars now. And he's checking everybody out, bro. So I see him panning, right? He's panning the whole crater, right? So I go, Evans is with me, Captain Evans. So he gets to me, and I stand up, and I'm doing this to him, bro. And this is what he does. And he walks back, and he walks back into his little shack. I mean, that's the only thing, like. Well, well, when you came, when that's came, my brother. That's God damn it, brother! I, when I, when I came, Tim, did you check that door for heat? When I came back to two eighty eight. Like that was oh eight, and then when did you retire? Not too long after that, right? A couple of years. How long uh, did you retire? I'm about six. I got on thirteen. Yeah, it was just. Uh, I quit. It was always 13. good. It was always good to like go turn up for jobs when he was there. If you were working, yeah, you, know, you could break his balls a little. Then I drove him the last year, bro. And there was many times like he would wake up in the morning and I would come out. I'd be sitting at his at the desk in the office. In my boots and my underwear, just to see, what, <laughs> <laughs> just to see what he would say, bro. And he'd do the same thing all the time. Oh, fucking idiot. Well, you know, you know, it's so funny, Tone. When I was a kid, I grew up two blocks from Kevin. We've been friends for forty-five years, and I remember, 40. I remember, Steve, exactly forty years, forty-two years. 40. I remember Steve, the chief, and all his brothers. He's got seven brothers and sisters. They would get him. In sisters? his house, they would like sit on top of him, three sisters. and they would they would stick their sturdy. They would pull their sock off their feet and stick <laughs> it in his right. mouth, <laughs> like like all sorts of stuff. And I would sit there, and they'd be like, "Look, you don't want this. You just sit there and you know, like whatever." So I mean, then I was showing up to jobs, and he would be in front of the you know in front of the building, and I'd be like, "How you doing, Chief? What can I do for you?" You know, it just seemed like want you know, a dirty sock in your mouth. <laughs> all right, get me. <laughs> Get the exposure by seeing the fire building, you get screwed. All right, <laughs> yeah, okay. so we're getting ready to wrap this bitch up, right? Producer Pete, we're good. Uh, Kev, me, appreciate Kev, you let coming me tell out, you, kid. Kev, one brother story. Can we get oh. one more story here? Yeah, yeah, get it in. So, and you were driving me, right? Remember, we went to like a third alarm somewhere in Corona, ass kicking fire, fire on multiple floors. I report in. And at the time, you know, now I got a goatee, but I had my mustache long. And it was like down past, like down to like underneath my chin. I can see that. <laughs> so we reported to, the, to his brother. And we're like, how you doing, Chief? What can we do for you? And he goes like this. <laughs> and he's outlining his neck. And Kevin goes, it's a fucking dirt alarm. <laughs> Don't worry about his fucking mustache. <laughs> we'll talk it's about it. Along. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> and listen, it was like three o'clock in the morning or whatever it was. He showed up like after the fire. As soon as I got back to the firehouse, I was like, yeah, yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. shaved right up. Chief, we all got pants on and nobody's grabbing their nuts. Let's get to, <laughs> let's get to brass tacks here. <laughs> oh. We report to this building. I st that's one of my favorite stories. We report to this building. Fire's blowing out everywhere. Chief, what can we do for you? And he's like this. <laughs> yeah, you must be a little long. A little long. I'm like, okay. Kevin's like, it's a fucking dirt alarm, man. <laughs> Dude, I'll give you another quick one. I'm driving one time with Evans, bro. We're going with 1075, and his he's behind me on the LIE. I don't know where it was, like Main Street. I'm fucking flying. The rig's about leaning over on yeah, two right. fucking wheels, right? We pull in. As a matter of fact, some guy pulls up to Evans and goes, Who's driving that thing like crazy motherfucker? <laughs> so we pull up. He doesn't even go up to the, to the command post. He grabs Evans out of the rig and goes, you better get your chauffeur in control before I hook you <laughs> and him up. He's like, your brother? He goes, yeah. <laughs> your brother? Yeah, that guy. And that's it. Oh, that's man. a wrap. <laughs> Listen, I don't like forget, that. 
hit the subscribe button and the notification, right, producer Pete? Right. Let's get this thing going. Tomorrow we're going down to the Boogie Down Brooklyn. We're going to do a spotlight on Rescue 2. Scary. Oh, it's very scary. Oh, oh, I said it. <laughs> we'll be going to R2. Don't forget, get Big salty. What happened? Big hooks. Getting salty apparel. If you want to get shirts like this and shit. No. Yep. Shirts like this. Like this. Tony, what can we send you? Some free stuff? The shameless plug, Tony. Yeah. Um. You know what? Send me a nice hat. How about that? The hat? I got good hats. The hat? I got good hats. We got shirts and extra small if you want me to send you a few down. <laughs> oh. Get down. Thank you. You know, T, you know that's what he's wearing. Oh. <laughs> oh I mean, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, you don't have no socks. No, uh, I got nothing but chicken legs. Fucking three minutes now. It's gonna happen. Somebody woke me up. Somebody woke me up. I know. Now it's gonna happen. Who woke me up? He has no socks, but those chicken legs. Oh, you did. Listen. Getting salty calf implants, baby. Oh, listen. Some getting salty calf implants available on the website. Check them out. That's it. Wrapping it up for my man Vincent Pickford. Love it, Tony. The head. Love him. Lieutenant Refrano. Captain Tedeschi. She had the big one, bro. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure. Great to see you all. See you, see you, we'll soon, see you soon, buddy. Take care, brothers. All right.